Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's author reading and author advice on All About Canadian Books. My guest this week is author Holly, Holly Gaddery, excuse me, Holly, sorry. And <laughs> if you missed our behind the book interview, I will put a link down below and in the description box. And there will also be a link at this end of this video. You don't want to miss it because Holly discusses her fantastic new memoir called Fuse and why she decided to write it. So welcome back, Holly. Welcome, welcome. Before I get you to read, if I may ask, what piece of advice do you have for aspiring writers? I would definitely say, I mean, somebody, I'm sure a lot of people said this, but read, but also read really widely. And not just the stuff that you think you're interested in, read mm. historical nonfiction, read poetry, read everything you possibly can. Um, and take notes, keep a, write, a reading journal, take notes on what you love in these books, which for some of us may take the fun out of reading if you're stopping <laughs> every five to write something down, but you know, read it once for enjoyment, then read it again to take notes, but keep a reading journal. They're very, very helpful. Perfect, thank you. And everyone, get comfortable. Halle is going to be reading uh, an excerpt from her novel, Fuse. And before you start, um, could you let us know why you've chosen this particular passage? Um, I, I guess this is, I was gonna say it makes me look like a bad mom. Um, oh. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> I've read the book, she's not. <laughs> I just think a lot of uh, parents, mothers right now, you know, pandemic might be struggling a bit and um, that it's okay to struggle. So I've chosen this to, you know, highlight the struggle and the struggle is natural and the struggle is real and the struggle is not anything you should shy away from talking about. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is from um, a chapter called Swiss Dot, starting right at the beginning of it. Rue's front teeth are beginning to cross, but I can't bring myself to take her thumb out of her mouth. She's finally back to sleep after a fitful night. It's 5.49 a.m. and now Joe and Nula are up, circling my feet like minnows. It feels like there's a fist in my throat. Nula's already nattering at me about the outfit I've picked out for her. She doesn't want to wear the floral print dress. She wants the new dress. I bought her for Nuru's, the Persian New Year. Held on the first spring Held on the first day of spring every year, Nehru's is the Iranian equivalent of Christmas, a highly anticipated celebration with feasts, parties, and presents, especially clothing. Nula's new dress is pastel purple party dress with a large cream sash around the middle that ties in an elaborate row about the size of her torso. In her search for this one dress, she's ripped several others off their hangers. Now her closet is a disaster and there's a ticking in my head. I snap at Nula, sending her scurrying back to her room to hang her clothes up, which of course she can't. She's too little. And she also broke the plastic hangers trying to tug the clothes down. I knew this and I told her to do it anyway. My heart hurts and my brain's beginning to itch. I have to try to calm down. I repeat to myself, none of this is a big deal. None of this matters. Clothing on the floor, toothpaste globs in the bathroom sink, a shriveled pea under the dining room table from last night's dinner. It's just everyday stuff. I can handle it. I should be able to handle it. Repeat, repeat, repeat for as long as possible. It's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. I'm nothing. I'm struggling to keep this internal war from breaking out and burning the world around me. Even though I logically understand a little mess won't hurt, reasoning doesn't help. I know, for instance, that it's not logically possible for fire to exist in the vacuum in which I live, and yet it does. I'm burning. It's difficult to understand unless you've suffered yourself or unless you're close to someone who has suffered and you have held their hand through a hell only they could experience, unless you believe them when you, they tell you it's there. And it is there. Some days I manage to keep its boundaries contained. Some days its lines advance, expand. Sometimes I lose. I'm losing today and I'm taking it hard because I've convinced myself I'd done everything to make sure I wouldn't. I'd gone to bed early. I'd slept in gym shorts and a training top so I could roll out of bed and pump endorphins into my body before the kids got up, before my mind woke up before it started in on me again. The morning's insistent chattering and the crows picking at lawn in my backyard. The clothes hangers scraping across the metal clothing rod and the cat licking crumbs off the toaster. There's a tiny jam handprint on the fridge door, a lopsided heart drawn in the condensation on the dining room window, a school lunch bag on the counter open and unpacked. And from Nula's room comes the sound of her sniffling. 
Nula once told me that she had a dream of me burning all her dresses and baby dolls. But I know it was a dream, mummy. You love me too much to do that. And I nod my head. Yes, of course. And I hope she really believes that. I picture her dolls, all the toys in our house, aflame in a glorious blaze and feel my eyes water with relief. I take a deep breath in and exhale slowly. That's it. Oh, thank you. I mean, you can you can just hear the the vulnerability and the on the honesty that you've written in your work. And thank you for sharing that. And thank you for being a guest this week um, on All About Canadian Books. That was yeah. Thank you. That was Holly Gaddery reading from Fuse and this week's guest. Thank you, viewers, and please come back. And thank you, Halle. My pleasure.